Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. Assalamu alaikum and hello my YouTube family. Today we will discuss concisely yet explicitly the concept of acquiring medical professionalism. This particular concept is ever evolving. Very frankly speaking, this concept or topic is extremely important, overwhelmingly interesting and profoundly challenging. It is extremely important because knowing and acquiring professionalism attributes helps medical students safeguard against various challenges during their practical life as young physicians. For example, medical legal issues arising from complaints made by the treated patients. This topic is overwhelmingly interesting as deals with everyday life of medical students and young physicians. And truly speaking, contemporary media is full of stories related to medical professionalism or rather unprofessional attitude and or behaviors. Last but not least, this topic as we earlier mentioned is profoundly challenging. For this, there are multiple factors, but the most importantly, there is still is a lack of general consensus over the definition of medical professionalism. This slide here depicts the overview of today's presentation, or we may call it our roadmap towards acquisition of medical professionalism. In the coming slides, we shall briefly talk about the background, and then we will discuss the general trends available from the published literature, and last but not least, we will have a set of suggested A, B, Cs that shall help acquire professionalism for anyone who is interested. During the 19th century, the profession of medicine, or rather modern medicine, acquired its status and virtually seized a monopoly over its practice. This was the time when licensing laws were started to be implemented or introduced. This development was generally accepted as both patients and society at large need the services of reliable and competent healers. Professionalism in this context could be considered as the means of organizing these services. Luckily, many medical schools now address this important topic in some manner, although the strategies utilized to teach professionalism may not always be adequate. Most of our today's presentation heavily relies on the findings and reports generated out of our scholarly work published in high impact and index journals. You can see these all on this particular slide. These published articles are the results of teamwork for which I am incredibly grateful to all my co-researchers and co-authors. If anyone among you is interested to read this work in full detail, these articles are available free of any cost. From our work, we had deduced that in the pursuit of medical professionalism, focusing on the cognitive base alone is certainly not sufficient. Non-cognitive components are extremely important as well since professional identity arises from a long-term combination of experience and reflection on experience. Role models who have an extremely important part to play in this process must understand professionalism and be able to stimulate reflection on the pertinent aspects of professionalism being modeled. Unfortunately, negative role models do exist. They are, ex they are responsible at least partly for the well-documented cynicism that can develop in some students and interestingly, some of these negative role models come from sources other than the medical community. For example, the media. And they may represent an important challenge to the student's professional development. Therefore, medical educators must be aware of this and uh, should know as how to deal with it appropriately. Another hindrance to this process is the so-called hidden curriculum. It is usually the thing that impairs the student's ability to reflect upon their experiences, leading them to distance themselves from patients more than is, is needed to maintain professional responsibilities. On the other hand, many positive reinforcements techniques have been suggested to improve this particular process. For instance, if a student was complimented by a patient or nursing staff on a professional um, behavior, the teacher should make sure this behavior is acknowledged in a meaningful way, such as directly praising the student, listing the comment on the student evaluation tools, sending an email to the clerkship director, or completing a praise card 
for exemplary behavior. Finally, we were able to report that a stepwise approach over the progression from medical students to practicing physician and the insight gained from patients' encounters would certainly enhance our understanding and abilities to promote professional attitudes and behaviors. Although the American Board of Internal Medicine defines professionalism in terms of its key elements as honesty and integrity, respect, responsibility, altruism, excellence, and service, yet still the interest in medical professionalism defined as a set of values, behaviors, and relationships that underpin the trust that the public place in the doctors has been growing in recent years due to many reports alerting about the lack of social commitment in a profession like medicine. That is, that's, that makes this much more than, than a mere occupation. From this very slide, our viewers can also find related references to get more details about those reports. For easy understanding for our learners, here we have named the concepts of professionalism as ABCs of professionalism. A few examples of professionalism attitudes are being non-judging, having patience, building trust, having the ability of acceptance, showing gratitude, an attitude of confidence is another key con component of professionalism attitudes. Furthermore, the attitude of the initiative is also an important element. The attitude of being lifelong learner is also very important for professionals to stay current in their field of study. Now coming to behaviors. Examples are being kind to others, use manners, be a good listener, allow others to learn, respect others, property, complete assigned work, keep space neat, follow directions, always do your best, use time wisely, be interested, ask questions. Punctuality is another critical behavior associated with professionalism. Like it or not, people are often judged by their appearance as well. A professional is therefore expected to dress in a respectable manner. Let's check the communication part. A few examples are active listening, giving constructive feedback, presentation, visual communication, nonverbal communication skills, written communication, oral communication skills, voice modulation, rapid development, storytelling, and negotiation. Our medical students need to know that a professional attitude is a manner in which you conduct yourself in a professional setting. A professional attitude is often more formal than a personal attitude in terms of appearance. If you wish to adopt a professional uh, professionalism attitude, then start doing it. Uh, then start doing so by upgrading your wardrobe. One of the first thing you can do to improve your professional attitude is to invest in a professional wardrobe. You must use formal speech, using proper grammar, avoiding slang and curse words, speaking about work-related subjects rather than personal topics, using magic words like please, thank you, and so on. Regularly using these words with both with colleagues and patients would, would inspire your uh, professional um, uh, attitude. Next, you have to focus on uh, work and keeping distractions away and be prepared. Come to work or other professional engage, engagements well prepared. Depending on your role or the expectations of the event, this probably means carrying a notebook and a pen at a minimum or your laptop or tablet if you need more resources. Another important habit to have is to take initiative. Taking initiative in the workplace can help establish your professional attitude. Never hesitate to ask for feedback. Seek feedback from your supervisors and your colleagues on your work performance. Demonstrate gratitude. Show through your attitude and action that you are happy to have your job and, and appreciate your, your co-workers. Gratitude is a great tool for establishing a positive personal and professional attitude. Now coming to behaviors, punctuality. Show your co-workers that you are reliable you care about their time and your own work and your own time and you value others time as well. Take steps to ensure you are on time for work each day such as setting alarms, 
and using calendar reminders for meetings and conferences, aim to arrive a few minutes early so that if you do have any, any email to reply or if you do encounter traffic during your commute, so you can still have a possible window of time to carry it out and be on time. Integrity in the workplace can lead to positive relationships. Keep colleagues and patients information confidential. Responsibility and accountability, again, element, very important, that both go hand in hand. So respected professionals, professionals set examples by taking responsibility for their actions. If you make a mistake, always admit it and then take steps to correct it or prevent it from happening it again in the future. Helping others. When they appear overwhelmed by tasks or are trying to solve challenging issues is also a behavior related to professionalism. Be reliable. Here you have to show your colleagues and your manager that they can rely on you to meet deadlines, do quality work, and show up to meetings on time. When someone asks you to complete a task, commit to doing it well and finish it on time. Let's see the communication. Action, active listening. People want to know that they are being heard. Really listen to what the other person is saying instead of formulating your responses. Ask for clarification to avoid misunderstandings. Body language also matters. This is important for face-to-face -face meetings and uh, video conferences. Make sure that you appear accessible. So have open body language. This means that you should not cross your arms and keep eye contact so that the other person knows that you are paying attention. Be concise and clear. Be brief yet specific for written and verbal communication. Practice being brief yet specific enough that you provide enough information for the other person to understand what you are trying to say. And always think before you speak. Always pause before you speak. Not saying the first thing that comes to your mind. Take a moment and pay close attention to what you say and how you say it. This one habit will allow you to avoid it. Practice, practice and practice. Get rid of unnecessary conversation fillers. For example, hmm, oh, hmm, and, and many more. Be empathetic. Communication is a two-way traffic. If you practice taking the opposite uh, or opposing viewpoint, you can reduce the difficulty and anxiety that sometimes arises when trying to uh, truly communicate with others. Developing empathy also helps you to better understand even the unspoken parts of your communication with others and, and help you respond more effectively. Education and training in general and professionalism in particular for the health professions need to be changed and improved. We believe that positive change is inevitable. And undoubtedly, it needs teamwork for all stakeholders, that is teachers, students, curriculum developers, medical college administration, and learning support that are in the line with the professionalism trends. The measures taken to adopt the positive change need to be very flexible and adaptable in order to create healthcare providers with high level of professionalism to be acquired and practiced. This slide here. Is for your references and we thank you all for watching this video and if you haven't subscribed our channel please do so so that you can get all updated knowledge related with the pertinent uh, topics and subjects in, at, at one place once again thank you so very much